right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Andy Gold, who is the creator of the Urgency-Based Selling System, a consultant, strategic growth cath catalyst, sales educator, practitioner and author. In fact, uh, you've got a couple of new books. What is it? Innovate Now and biggest pitch of your life yeah let me just there they are excellent 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 and what we're going to talk about today is how to develop sales heroes when there aren't any dragons attacking the village interesting interesting concept uh, and i think uh and as we get into this we know that a lot of people excel in chaos right or or when there's like crisis i worked for a company one time um years ago up in silicon valley executive team fantastic a crisis management right they come together they do all that it was fantastic never fixed any of the problems <laughs> so um so i think uh, it's it's the consistency uh, and uh, it's the consistency and and predicting things that are going to happen and and all of that that's really important so so what do you mean by sales heroes when there aren't dragons attacking the village? So the first part of the idea is that I just, I see salespeople when they're doing their job as heroes. And why do I say that? Because they're, 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 they're doing this heroic thing. They're trying to bring a, a prospect to a higher peak of well-being, the, the prospects on a false summit. And they're trying to bring the prospect to a higher peak of well-being and the prospects fighting them. Prospects saying, go away, I'm good. Don't talk to me. I got everything I need, etc." And so there's a true irony in there. And when the salesperson succeeds in his or her task, here's what they do. They open the closed mind. They open the closed mind because the, the prospect had a closed mind. And the reason I think that's hero, uh, heroic on several levels is, first of all, it helps themselves, the company, it helps the, the client, but opening the closed mind is what moves civilization forward. Mm. And so there are several different senses in which I mean, it's what, what salespeople do is heroic. Now, the reason why I introduce the second part of the sentence, even when no dragons are attacking the village, is because having started three businesses myself and having scrambled in what I would call a do or die scenario, mm -hmm. like, you know, I, I got an MBA, I wrote a 50 page business plan, I started a business and I found out my business plan wasn't worth the paper on which <laughs> it was printed. And it was low quality state, mm -hmm. you know, low quality pa paper. So, I was in a do or die scenario and it prompted me to become very entrepreneurial and creative to succeed. I don't think that's the scenario that necessarily faces the average salesperson in the average company. I think in the average company, the salesperson is joining that company because it's an established company. Yeah. They're not in do or die mode, right? They're not in do or die mode. And you have ownership and leadership that's sitting there like scratching their heads saying, I don't get it. You're like, you know, we, we opened new accounts. We started new accounts. This business had nothing. We didn't have product. We didn't have customers. Now, they were, now we're well established and we have sales team members who can't open up new accounts. That's the scenario I mean. There's no real, there's no barbarian at the gate. There's no dragon attacking the village. When I started my three bi businesses, there were dragons attacking the village every time. I had to be creative. Yeah, yeah. But for the average salesperson, that's not the case. So the question is, if there's no crisis, is there something we can do as leaders to help the sales team member be do this heroic behavior, like opening new accounts when it's not do or die? That's what I mean by this idea. Yeah. And, and Does that make sense? No, that makes total sense to me, Andy. And it, it's interesting. It's interesting how you framed it, uh, because we we call, 
you know, salespeople within an enterprise or an organization who have the mindset that you're talking about in terms of doing business development and all of that and opening new accounts as salespreneurs. So it's like the entrepreneur within the organization and exactly what you said, when you started your business as an entrepreneur, you had no choice. You had to be in that mode. I think we have to find a way of helping salespeople to be those entrepreneurs within the organization and realize that uh, is that it's a, it is, as you said, they are heroes. It's a creative, it's a very creative job if you approach it that way. If you, yeah. It, it, so then what should a leader or an owner do if all of a sudden they wake up one day and they say, my gosh, I have all of these account managers or CSRs who in some cases I'm paying $200,000 a year, you know, to wait for the phone to ring. Mm -hmm. How do I go from there to this heroic when there is really no gun at anybody's? I mean, this could be an owner who's taking out millions of dollars a year in profit. Yeah. So a starting point is that the owner or leadership have to level, and this could be a good time to do this because it's, you know, the beginning of the year, have to level with the sales team and say they're not really happy. They have to let them know they're not happy. And, you know, one way to express it is I'm not getting the return on the assets. So you don't have alignment. The salesperson might be happy. They're making not enough money. But, but the owner or the leadership say, sees there's unrealized potential. I mean, going deeper, if you think about the idea of the 20 mile march that Collins um, that's discusses, I think, in How the Mighty Have Fallen, one of his later books, there's this idea that there's good luck and bad luck. There's good times and bad times. You, you, have, you have to all the time, you got, you got to do the program all the time. Mm -hmm. You can't wait till the gun is at your head. You got to prepare for the next um, CMO meltdown. 2007, 2008, yeah. you have to prepare for the next COVID. You know, we've had crises almost every eight to 10 years since 1982 in the United States. Yeah. We've had some kind of recession and there are all these black swan events, unpredicted. So a wise leadership, in my view, prepares for that. They, they get ready for it and they have to help move the sales team into that mindset. Yeah. No, that, that 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 makes total sense to me, Andy. And it's interesting that you mentioned that about the you know the the recurring crises. Uh, I uh, you know as you know, I'm from Ireland, and I came to America during the dot com era in the in the mid late nineties. And since I've been in America, so I've been through the dot com implosion. I've been through nine eleven, uh, the financial crisis, now COVID. So to your point, is there are crises that will come along all the time. And and one of the interesting things was after the financial crisis, uh, talking with some large sales, global sales organizations when I was with Hathaway, you know, they were some of the sales leaders were expressing, uh, you know, frustration or surprise. They said, like, our sales team was so good. And now they're they're you know, now they're really struggling. And I said, but, but were they that good? Because everybody had budget before the financial crisis like companies were awash with cash everybody had budget and to your point it was easy just to sit and wait for the phone or to call up or get somebody to do something it's a lot different as you say when you've got resistance there and that's and i think that's the mindset that you need to get your salespeople into is that uh, it's almost like every month is is a battle yeah, and with that in mind, of course, budget's one way to do it, to put it stretch numbers. Mm -hmm. But there are critical activities salespeople um, do that are condition precedent to closing a sale. And we need to establish, this is my recommendation, KPIs. A healthy sales team hit business development, forward-looking um, KPIs for business development. So what could these include? How many new sales calls did you have? Meaning first time sales calls with qualified prospects. Imagine if you had 10 people, 10 salespeople on a team and you had a budget of one a month. Everybody's gonna have one in a month. If everybody hits that number, that means we meet 120 new people in a year. And depending upon the size of our sale, that, that could be like 10X growth. But if we could just stick with that one KPI, 
one new per month. And I'm not suggesting that's enough. I'm just doing the numbers. There's do or die and best efforts, do or die and best efforts. On a best efforts basis, if, if a leader has a one-to-one -one at the end of a month with a salesperson and says, oh, by the way, on that KPI, one new meeting this month, how did that go? Oh, gee, boss, I didn't get one this month, but I'm going to try twice as hard next month. And the critical question is, how many does that salesperson need in the second month? In my experience, this, the typical salesperson thinks the answer is one. Yeah, it's not. But the answer is two. That's bringing do or die right down to a KPI that's meaningful, and that's turning them into sales heroes. Of yeah. course, very often you may need to coach them. How do you do that? They may not have the right mindset. But if you are on a best efforts basis, if, if a sales team gave their very best effort each month of the year, you could collect 12 zeros. In other words, no. Yeah. It, it, so there has to be almost like a crusade-like atmosphere. We're doing this for the health of the company, or I'm not getting the return I want, or we're preparing for the next recession, and here's how we're doing it. A healthy sales team is hitting these KPIs. And a related issue is, and there's a new webinar I've done, where are the salespeople I hired? Mm -hmm. I think there are many leaders and owners who think they're a ready to go salespeople. You just hire them, you put them on the street and they work. And I, I, if I could briefly recount it, I had one yeah, prospect who said they had 600 resumes. They talked to a hundred. They liked, um, I mean, they talked to a hundred or, uh, no, they, they talked to two or 300. They liked a hundred enough to give, have them take the online diagnostic test, like a disc or profiles yeah, yeah, yeah. or caliper test. And then 15 passed the test. They hired three after more interviews and background checks and they all failed. And the owner said, how is that possible? And I said, well, it might be possible that they were, they had the raw material to be coached and trained, but it would be a mistake to think that somebody you hire is ready to go. So what's the program that you have in place to take folks who have the right mindset and develop them so that they could do one per month or one warm introduction a month from an existing um, big fan? That could be another example. Yeah, no, I think that's a it's a great example, and it is. I mean, let's face it, hiring salespeople is probably the most frustrating and difficult thing out there. <clears throat> Not only, as you said, is it hard to, is it, I mean, it's hard to find the right ones, the good ones, or whatever. I mean, that's always a perennial struggle. Um, but as you say, is uh, if you don't have the system set up internally, then they're set up to fail. And you're right, most people hire them, train them for a month and then let them loose and then wonder why, you know, three, six months later, they're bombing. Yeah. And the last piece I would add is, do you have a heroic sales culture? So what do I mean by that? Um, unfortunately, in our culture, there's uh, this prevailing notion of, of the Willie Loman slimy loser from death of a salesman. Yeah. And so very often people within the organization and leadership roles have that mindset. Very, sometimes even salespeople have that mindset and it has to be dispelled. Like salespeople will say, I don't want to do that behavior. Why? That's slimy. Ugh, I don't want to do that. And so to support all this, we need, I suggest, a, a successful way to approach this is to have the culture of the heroic salesperson, which often requires mindset training, coaching the mindset. So if you have the right mindset, if you if you put the sales team in harm's way, in other words, you don't give them an or, like you could keep on doing what you're doing, or if you want to, you could do this new program and we'll incent you for it. It's gotta be an and, and then if you coach them in it, you coach the mindset, you coach the skill set, you're gonna get the results. And that's how you could get heroic outcomes even without a dragon attacking the village. Yeah, no, I, I think you I think you touch on a very, very, very important point there on, on mindset, but also because let's face it, popular culture has represented salespeople in a negative fashion forever um, in movies and books. Uh, and the other part is there's an there's a high percentage of salespeople who default into this career in the first place. You know, think of how many people go to 
go get marketing degrees or something in college and then they come out of college and they realize that in any organization there's a lot more salespeople than there is marketing people and they often default into the job so they start off in a job they didn't really want in the first place and they're carrying in this negative popular culture baggage so i think absolutely i think you have to change the perception of what a salesperson really is going back to what you said at the beginning i mean they're helping helping solve a problem for somebody who is at times resisting solving that problem and not realizing the benefits absolutely and so i mean the way i see it salespeople could lead an exalted life if if they embrace this mindset if they're supported in a culture with this mindset but if if these sort of things don't exist we shouldn't be surprised if salespeople default to being like an account manager or a CSR, you know, they just wait for the phone to ring or they want to manage existing accounts. Yeah. Plus, uh, plus Andy, as you know, is over the last number of years, you know, with inbound and all of this, we've almost given, you know, created, or there's been a culture as well, created a perception that everything, you know, oh, it's all over to the, you know, marketing and all our other stuff. And I'll just sit here and wait for the lead because, because outbound is dead. It's all inbound now. And, and we've allowed people to just kind of sit there and like not do outbound. Yeah. And, and a good way to kind of in uh, frame this to get people to focus on outbound is whatever your objective is. How about we have five good dollars of opportunity properly qualified in the pipeline for every $1 we need. Yep. So again, putting the salesperson in harm's way so that he or she has to do the critical activities. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think approaching, finding an appropriate uh, business development forward looking metric like new meetings or warm introductions and approaching it on a do or die basis, that's, that really helps make for, for strong salespeople, and it makes the company strong. You know, it 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 it, it enhances the value of the enterprise and its sustainability. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I agree with that, and it's like, and so, yeah. While inbound and all of that is great, uh, you know, it should also be. Every, I think the problem is that we we get into this mindset, or people do, of. It's one or the other, right? Uh, instead of saying like it's always a combination of different things. So, you know, for your for your salesperson, it should be yeah, okay. Let's look at the stuff that's coming into you now. Let's look at the stuff. What are you doing exactly? To augment or off? And if there's not enough coming in, what are you doing to to build pipeline? Yeah, John, and I mean just to piggyback on that, where the average salesperson is looking to inherit and take over a book of business to manage, what have they done using those um, existing clients as nodes or referral points where again, A refers you to B at a minimum, if they're being handed accounts, is it not reasonable to say, okay, I'm going to hand you an account and you get to manage it as long as you harvest so much new stuff out of it yeah. every period of time. Like, what's the quid pro quo, I think the basic attitude is they're just doing their job. And this could be both salesperson and company and leadership, you know, if they just call on those accounts. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, put some teeth into it, got to have introductions or whatever metric is appropriate. And uh, that makes them heroic. Because after all, they're not only doing the things we already described, John, but in an organization where the salesperson, the sales team is small compared to the whole organization, they're in effect feeding and keeping jobs alive for those, those, all those people and for their families. So that's another aspect to what they do that's heroic is yeah. without the salespeople bringing in the business, nobody has a job. Yeah, I know. And that's where I think, uh, number one, you know, salespeople should feel proud of what they do um as you said heroic and the rest of the organization and beyond should be supportive of them that's why it's so that's why it's so sad when you see you know popular culture and other things like denigrating salespeople because you know without salespeople none of us would have the lives that we have today because at some stage a salesperson helped us to get something that really made a difference to our lives absolutely john absolutely so here, here, here's a model 
here's a way, and perhaps if I could add, um, yeah. you know, just one other thought. So the core is that we, we, we bring the prospect who's looking down, they, they're on a false peak. We get them to look up and we get them to notice a higher peak of well-being, and they're fighting us all the way, go away, I'm good, don't talk to me. But eventually we become great friends. This process, through my introspection, I've identified could lead to an exalted mindset. I call it emotional intoxication. Mm. So another payoff uh, to the salesperson is not only he's helping all these people and or she's and you know she's taking care of her family, but you get high from it. So the the formula is moral certainty. That's why it's so important that you're actually bringing somebody to a higher state of well-being. And then this heroic activity where you're, you're persisting in the, in the face you know, of rejection. And the last piece is some sort of meditative state so you don't burn yourself out. So it's moral certainty, meditative state, heroic action. And you do that all often enough. I feel I've achieved a mindset, a mind state of emotional intoxication, which is kind of like a high. And it's, an, it's a means and an end, which means I like to live this way. I feel that way right now, right. but it also spurs creativity. So it's like a perpetual motion machine in the mind for creativity. So when salespeople do their thing in the way in which we've talked about it, John, it leads to this exalted mind state. Yeah, no, I love it. So that's it. Salespeople 2022, everybody needs to get high. <laughs> well, they could get high in other ways that yeah, are easier, true. but I don't think they're as enduring as meaningful. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I like that exalted state. And I think that's I think you really hit the nail on the head about uh, describing what a wonderful uh, career, what a wonderful experience, you know, selling can be if you if you get your mindset right, if the company gets their mindset right, if you approach it in a different way and you think yeah like i am i'm i'm out there on the front line i'm the tip of the spear i'm the hero i'm helping i mean it's it's such a different mindset than oh i've got my number to make exactly exactly yeah listen uh, andy this has been fantastic uh, as usual uh, thank you so much for your insights um before we go uh, all andy's information will be below this video obviously but please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your yeah, sure. So thanks for that opportunity. So we've been doing this uh, uh, for 28 years. We've had over 150 clients. You should figure that if you're not doing the program, um, just from the program, you would get at least a 15 to 20 percent boost in profitable sales. Um, we have the books we've written. I taught for eight years at a, a New Jersey um, university, Fairleigh Dickinson University. And if anybody has a question, I'd love to chat with them. They could get me at uh, Andy G at urgency -based -selling net. Fantastic. Uh, again, thank you, Andy. And I would encourage people to check it out. As you've heard from what Andy said, he's got a, a, a very, a, a very interesting and I think refreshing approach to, to this whole perennial issue of, you know, how do we, how do we maximize our sales? How do we get the most out of our, out of our salespeople? So I would encourage people to check it out. So thanks again, Andy. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you, John. And thanks to all of you for listening.